So, what do we have today? Um, based on our clothing, welcome to Sports Center. Da-na-na, da-na-na. Hey everybody, and welcome to After Chat. This is our 2014 end of year special. Um, what's special about it? Oh, no. We're just, we're here. Uh, I'm Tom. I'm Ryan. I'm Jesse. All right. So we have Jesse in here. Now, I think you should go with the talk show format. You can, you need a desk. Yep. You have the couch over there. Have Ryan sit on the couch. You have a guest every time. You try to talk to them seriously. Ryan makes fun of them the whole time. It's perfect. I, I think that's going to be need, season we three. Need, we need a band and stuff. We need a band. Yeah. No, no, we just need a DJ because we're not cool enough for a whole band. Mm. I don't know. I could probably find you a douchebag with a guitar. Well, I have an ex-roommate who's a douchebag with a guitar. Well, he's not really yeah. a douchebag. He's just a guy with a guitar. <laughs> who's but getting married. Who is getting married. Yeah. Um, yeah, he'll come in and just, like, riff around for a little while. And, you know, so, but that, that might be season three. We'll do the desk and the, and the couch. I we'll like probably that. use the brown couch just because it, I think that, I think there's some talk. merit to this idea. All right. Well, we always try to change things up from time to time, so I like that for season three. You're probably wondering why I have brought you all together besides To Kill Superman. I just kind of wanted to go over the year mm-hmm. and, you know, see how our year went. I know we had, we did some fun things and just kind of recap news and what we did. And yeah, okay, that. And then we'll do they're, they're, they're more, they're more aptly. We'll go in to see what we're going to be doing in 2015 because hmm. that looks like it's going to be even more fun. It's, it's interesting. So... For me, especially, New Year's Eve is kind of like everybody's doing their year-end stuff, and it doesn't make a ton of sense, because we've been doing TempleCon so heavily for three years now, that New Year's is more February 10th. Yeah. It's, we, the, the convention being such a huge, huge event, and it, it taking place the first week in February. New Year's Eve isn't much. New Year's strange. Eve is not really a transition time. The transition time is after the first weekend of February. So, but it's still a good night to have a party. It's a good night to have a party that's all tired and yelling at people. That's usually what it is. Uh, <laughs> that's no, what I'm that's, counting on. <laughs> yeah, TempleCon makes New Year's Eve fun. Yeah, I'm tired. <laughs> so, I wrote down some very generic questions for us to to go through because <laughs> some very generic questions. Generic questions. Now, obviously, this is a photography podcast, but if we're Photography, video, media, really anything that ties to us in some way uh, can, can apply to any of these questions. Um, so, your first question for the group is, what were the biggest hits in 2014? What were the big news hits? What were the big product hits? What, what was big this year that really affected you? I can give you the, the little gear one was the Young Nuo 603, whatever. The $70 good Young Nuo flash was a nice piece of equipment. Yep. It's one of those third-party things that work very well. The one that has, like, no safeties and can blow up? Yeah, it's... They say it has a thermal a thermal safety, but it doesn't. It, <laughs> or if it does, it's... So, I bought... this. Is, it's a $70. It's a it's a replacement for, like, a really expensive Nikon flash or Canon flash. It's very powerful, but it's a Chinese... Chinese piece of equipment for Chinese market. It's very cheap. Mm-hmm. Um, their old flashes used to overheat and beep and stop working. Because, well, I mean, all flashes make a lot of heat. They all get hot, and they have to yeah. manage that in some yeah. way. And this one would rather melt than stop working. It will always give you as much power as it can until... I, I kept shooting full power for, like, 30 or 40 shots as quick as you could, and then, like, <laughs> pulled the batteries. They were outlines, at least, and they were, like, bulged in the middle. They were getting ready to pop. So That's not good. It was testing. <laughs> yeah, it was... It's it's a nice flash. Did though. you at least do it on camera so we could record all of it? No. It's what it's 20 minutes of sitting there popping a flash. That's okay. No, it isn't. I can edit that <laughs> down to 18 minutes. Yeah. No, that's that's called work. <laughs> I can't wait till the spring. Because this spring is going to be like the, the drone open season of hell. It's already starting. It's already... People are already breaking them. <laughs> Well, I mean, we were just flying around three different drones earlier today, just here at the studio. <laughs> and I broke one. <laughs> so drones are, you know, drones were big this year. Uh, the first oh, thing yeah. that popped into my head was uh, the, the film Birdman. Oh, yeah. We saw yeah, that. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, that, uh, okay, we can talk movies. Movies, yeah, yeah. movies is good. Movies still applies to us because we make movies. That's we a good place to go. <laughs> so Birdman was, 
amazing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everything about it, I feel, was just absolutely impeccable. The, uh, the way it was shot, the way that it was presented to look as if it was one continuous shot was incredible. The acting was amazing. The, you know, I cannot remember the director's name, but he really pushed his actors to, oh, to yeah. the limits of their ability. Yeah, it was, it was the actors acting as actors at each other. Yeah. It's like that, that scene is just, it's, it's this little segment of that movie which just kind of shows how far they pushed their acting and how, how well it was all done. Yeah. I loved how meta the whole thing was by yeah. casting Michael Keaton, the former Batman, as the Birdman, though, and what he was trying to do with himself and his career and reinvent himself. And then the score. The score was also yeah. absolutely... Oh, yeah. It just blew my mind. It was just perfect for what it was. And a funny thing about it is you ask most people who saw it, they'll tell you that the entire score was nothing but a one long drum solo. It was just drums. But it wasn't. It was a full, you know, full jazz ensemble orchestra. It was very, very nice. But the the thing that really punctuated it was the drums. Yeah, the, the drums were amazing, and you see the drummer a couple of times during the film. He's yeah, that's set, a, set up backstage or something. He's actually or out playing on the, the street score. when yeah. he's walking by. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. yeah. And that doesn't pull a, a best soundtrack. I mean, it doesn't pull like best everything. I'll be pissed, but it's it's got to be in the running for best sound, best sound mixing. Maybe best score. I think it should get best acting and best supporting acting nominations. Like everything about that movie. I mean, it's the best movie I've seen in years. Yes, yeah, really. Years. Is. It's that was phenomenal. So that was a very good couple of weeks for movies. Um, as much as Interstellar has is kind of a good discussion point. It was a it was a good experience at IMAX, and it has a lot of good parts. And, uh, that's what I'll say about Interstellar. Um, <laughs> The one that I, I really liked and is one, probably my favorite animated movie of all time now is Big Hero 6. I still haven't seen it. You need to see Big Hero 6. I'm glad you're done with Interstellar, though, because I found it ultimately very forgettable. It was. Oh, I, I don't know. It was, it was a very <laughs> interesting, interesting experience visually and the sound design and the. It was all very. A bunch of good pieces that didn't quite fit together into a movie. Yeah. It's really. That's actually a really good way to put it. Was, it everything about it was excellent, except itself as a whole. Yeah, except the movie just kind of falls short of oh, what yeah. it could have been. The interview. The interview. The interview. So how much did they make? No idea. Like $3 million. Okay. I thought it was more than that, but I don't know why it, it seemed $3 like... $3 million in the domestic box office so far because it got a super, super limited release uh, does that include three days ago. Does that include digital sales? That do, I do not believe that includes yeah. video on demand. Which is all of the sales. Which is going to be the majority. See, yeah. I think when you include that, it probably did just as almost just as well as it would have. You think so? Did you see how much it was being rented for? Six bucks a pop. Fifteen for HD. Really? Yeah. Jesus. That's Google Play. That's YouTube. That's on demand. That's I know three or four people who have rented it and watched it. Yeah, I know it's a few like, as well. It, I'm sure they did very well, and this might kind of bring in a genre of straight to straight. To on demand movies. Because <laughs> if, they're, if they're successful here, it's. Part of me w questioned at one point whether or not the whole thing, the whole thing with North Korea, was a big viral marketing campaign for this movie because they knew it was a piece of shit. I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard it's kind of lame. I've, I've heard it. I heard it was exactly what you expect, and it's like you'll probably enjoy it because you knew what you went in for, but. Right. It is right. what it is. What I've heard is, is it's the same, it's very similar to people who saw Snakes on a Plane. People went in expecting because it's Samuel L. Jackson that it's a low grade A movie were really pissed off, and the people who went in expecting it to be a really good B movie fucking loved it. Okay. okay, yeah. I think most of the people were looking at it and going, "Well, it's Seth Rogen and James Franco. I know exactly what to expect. They're gonna be happy with it." Because yeah. I want to see it, but mostly but, because but I like Seth Rogen. But for the stir that it's caused, I mean, that's that's the thing. Well, I, and part of that I look at is uh, I I have. Friends who are still working in information security, and they look. I don't know if they actually looked at the code or just at snippets of it or whatnot, but they they basically looked at it. And went, this isn't how the North Koreans hack, right? They're basically right. saying the feds are wrong. This isn't how the North Koreans hack, or is it? Because as far as I know, the way they hack is they hire the Chinese. They, they said to it looked for them. Everyone I've talked to that that that's in information security says it looks like it was an inside job at Sony. <laughs> like the information they had. Was like you would have to have been. Wait, even the terrorist threats, like the whole what's that the, came what out the hell's later. the name of their organization? 
something. It's GOP, but it's yeah. Well, yeah, because that's not the Republican Party at all. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. um, no, I mean it, it is GOP, but I forget what it stands yeah. for in this case. But they, I mean they were making like some pretty severe threats against this country. I know if anyone actually went out and watched the interview, and I'm wondering if that was part of like a little Sony inside job as well. Well, those people are fucked if they ever get find out. Found out. Yeah, well, that's a that's a bit far. You got to wonder if that, that was tacked on. That looks like it was tacked on after the fact because if you look at the way the media reacted to it, it was all the leaks at Sony, and then someone was like, "Oh, it must be North Korea. North Korea. Let's tie it to the interview." Boom! Then the interview spiked. But first, nothing ever came about because of the interview until way, way after yeah. the first leaks came out. I was also surprised because after uh, years ago, Team America World Police yeah. just shit on Kim Jong Il. Yeah, uh, Kim Jong Un um, is suddenly going to care. Kim Jong Il never cared. Kim, Kim Jong Un never cared. Rather. Yeah. So damn Korean family name. Until we see more damaging stuff, it's it's tough to say. It's not. A more controlled inside job than you think it is, because what's what have been the damaging things? I know there have been some, but they're not. There's nothing super. I mean, there's a raw reputation hurt, but yeah, probably someone that was maybe on their way out anyway or something. Yeah, it's like what's yeah. No, there's yeah. not for for a leak of that size. There has not been the release of things that actually would matter enough to really hurt Sony, which is a thing. It's not. Is you can imply whatever you want to imply from that, but yep. And if they the, released the script to Paul Blart Mall Cop 2. Oh, God. <laughs> Just the fact that if that stops Paul Blart Mall Cop 2... No, it's only going to make it better. At, then then <laughs> they did us help, all a favor. Someone else can help them with the script now. <laughs> yeah, they'll get some good rewrites. <laughs> all right. So that gave us our, our hits. And obviously, for us, a lot of movie stuff. Biggest flops of 2014. Was there any... Anything that you expected to be really great and just failed miserably? Interstellar. Damn it. The interview. Took mine. Um, hmm. Were there any epic fails that, from the news? Was it, you know, the U.S. Congress. Well, yeah, it was a pretty epic fail, but they've been flopping for years. Yeah, that's true. It's kind of status quo now. That's a sad state of affairs. But... What was your favorite news story of any kind in 2014? Well, I'll, 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 I'll lead you both in then. Yeah. The announcement of the two different Sigma 150-600 lenses. Really Definitely want... earth-shattering right there. I... <laughs> they're, they're super nice lenses. I, I really want the sport one, but it's way out of my price range. Yeah. The contemporary one I'll probably end up with. Sigma as a whole in 2014 did very well. Yeah. No. That's the last year, a little, even a little more than a year. That's that's a big thing. Yeah, no, Sigma's really kind of brought the third parties really back into into the market here with lenses because for a long time, like you'd say Tamron, and people would just be like, "Oh God," but they're putting out decent stuff, and Sigma is just—I mean—they're putting out better stuff than the first party producers now for lenses. It's insane. So that one fifty six hundred, besides the fact it's a stupid long zoom. But it just looks so nice. That's a nice lens. It's such a tough... Good news stories are so fleeting now. They are. That's why I wanted to kind of... It's, it's kind of sad. They're just the little chump change between the, the giant massive bullshit that they try and get you to pay attention to for 24 hours at a time. Yeah, yeah and, and that's the thing. A lot We're so oversaturated with quote-unquote news at all times that it does get to be a bit much and then you know you say you know your favorite news story and all this coming to my mind are you know the big news stories which were all tragedies this plane crashed these people were killed you know all these horrible things and i don't i don't want to call any of those things my favorite news story because obviously no, cause i'm looking specifically the, for the, the horrible things news. but they were the biggest stories of the year and yeah part part of that might just be you know the that 24-hour news cycle, the fact that we're just getting barrage of things constantly, and it's only the tragedies that stand out. So this week, one of the, the fun news stories, see the, the Chinese laser helping with the Hawaiian telescope thing? Yeah. It's, it's little scientific stuff like that that's quick, but it's all, it's good news that not everyone actually gets to consume all the time. Yep. 
and I, I I hate that. You know, it's one of those just it's so underreported and it's not. So that new story is uh, they're they're booting up the billion dollar telescope that is they're finishing up on Hawaii, and to, to calibrate they're using a high powered Chinese laser, hmm. which was literally used to like take out satellites oh, theoretically wow, like. Yeah. Theoretically, take out <laughs> U.S. spy satellite. Yeah. Um, supposedly, <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's one of those like, yay, science. And then, all right. This one's more for Ryan and I. But if you have an opinion, you're welcome to join. Oh, in I have scene. lots of opinions, sir. Who won, Nikon with the D750 or Canon with the 7D Mark II? The New England Patriots. Yeah. D750 or 7D Mark II. I think the 7D Mark II is a bigger elite. But. Well, the 7D Mark II marks the beginning of the next product cycle for Canon. Because <clears throat> everything in the, in the pro end in Canon right now is old. Yeah. 2015, we're going to basically see the whole. I think we're going to see the whole line recycled in 2015, 2016. They're all going to get their next upgrades. I mean, Nikon has some big upgrades coming too. But the but. 750 was a big upgrade. The 810 was a big upgrade. They're at the beginning of their life cycle. Yeah. So you're going to see another full frame I think at some point. Well, you're going to see another they already said they're going to see another 36 megapixel whether that's another 800 or that's another camera. Mhm. There's another 36 megapixel coming. But between those between the two, it's it's probably the 70 Mark II. It's it pushes something at least. It's not The, the, the 750 is a, is a great camera, but it's a great camera between two other great cameras. It's like yeah. And the other thing, which I'm, you're seeing a lot of now, and I, this is why I picked the 70 Mark II as the winner in this, is you're seeing it included in a lot of lists that would only normally be full frame cameras, where yeah. it's a crop sensor camera. There's a lot of people who are going, yeah, it may be a crop sensor, but it is a professional camera. So yeah, I, I think Canon was able to finally make a viable crop center, sensor professional camera. I think there were viable professional crop sensor cameras before that. That one just. It, it offers something that maybe the, the full frames don't have and the speed of the tracking. It's the and all that speed, kind of stuff. it's the focus. I mean, 65 cross-type focus points, I mean, yeah. it's insane. It offers things that maybe the, the for full frame won't, but it still has its crop sensor issues. And, mm -hmm. But, yeah. Right. Now, if we were going to shoot movies, we'd probably go grab a 750 if we had to choose between these two. Hmm. Except for the fact that all the lenses would still work on the 70 Mark II for what we do, because you and I both <laughs> shoot Canon. All right, this one you can both answer because this is fine. What was your biggest buy in 2014? Biggest ticket item, and was it worth it? I built a computer. That was my biggest purchase. So that's your time. editing, Greg. Yes. For for video editing. Yeah, and I I didn't even spend a ton of money. I did a lot of homework, a lot of research. Built a pretty decent little rig. I have yet to find anything to tax it. And when I use it to edit and render HD video, it fucking flies. I mean, it, it, it'll it render 1080p at real time. That's nice, because this thing is slow. You'll find that that's good for a long time, too. Uh, my my rig, I built for $1,100 or so total. Also playing games? Oh, yeah. Amazing. Well, and the, they last for so long now. It used to be that computers would, would fall off the curve rather quickly. Yeah, no, we're hitting a slowdown in the technology. Well, it's the software isn't there to tax it. Like, you don't need... The software is not getting harder and harder to push like it was, really. I find that with mine. I expected mine to slow down more quickly than it is, and it's... I don't, I'm not going to upgrade that for a long time. Right. Mine has to be this shiny thing. <laughs> uh, I did need a new tablet. Went with the Tab S, which there's a video around somewhere at some point. I'm going to produce about this versus the Nexus 9, but it's... Is that the one you have all the raw footage for and you need me to edit? Yeah. <laughs> it's basically just a very good screen and a tablet for... It's good for photographers. It's... Yeah. I, I appreciate the fact that this is like the best mobile screen you can put in something. So... Isn't it better than HD? Oh yeah, it's, it's UHD, so it's 2600 by 1400, something like that, but it's the contrast ratio. Like, you can get UHD pretty easily in mobile devices now. But Super AMOLED screens are, there's like three devices that actually have that, and the contrast ratio is completely different. It's no, that's one thing that's pissing me off in computer monitors. 
15 years ago, I could buy a CRT monitor with like 2,000 lines of resolution, you know, something that you would call Ultra HD or something like that today. Today, trying to find an LED monitor that's got more than 1,080 lines of resolution is a pain in my ass. Oh, that yeah. drives me nuts because... You don't go above 1920 20 by 1080 without... 1920 isn't even available, or 1080... You used to be able to get 1900 by 1200. 1920, 1200 used to be a standard. That was a long time ago, though. Not that long ago. I have never owned a monitor that was 1900 by 1200. I'm not surprised, but you're also a decade younger than me. so. <laughs> <laughs> I've had computers since I was a little kid, so I can't say that. <laughs> so, all right. um, but I, my, my 17-inch laptop I had when I was doing IT work was 1920, 1200. And it was great. You could watch things in full HD and... Still be able to see the start menu on well, the Well, and, and that's yeah, a perfect I, example. I, like I have a laptop of that same generation. It was an yeah. older Dell. Yep. The screen in that Dell that I bought in, God, it's 2005 maybe? Yep. That screen is better than anything I've seen on any laptop since. Yep. I, I own one of the same age. That's, that's that, that kind of, I think it was 1280 resolution. Um so the panels, the panels get produced in such quantity that that makes them actually affordable. That's why a 1920 by 1080 monitor is so cheap now is because there's massive producers I making so many. I understand that, but that I, doesn't mean I can't be pissed off about it. You, so you have to go to a really custom... Yeah, you can get a Scepter monitor, monitor that is 1920, 1200 no, and pay $800 it, for it. You, it's for, fucking beautiful. For 600, no, 19, 1200 <laughs> is a crappy monitor if you're going to go outside of HD. If you're going to go outside of HD, you go well into 2000 by 18, 1900. Like you, you get a you, 2K monitor then. You go to 2K, and that's you can get a decent under a thousand dollars. You can get a decent 2K, a decent. I spent thousand dollars. I spent two hundred and fifty on that monitor. It's something that, <laughs> but right now it's something that you would never need unless you're actually going to use it for resolution and video. Unless you own a camera that's shooting that video, which costs ten times as much, you would never own that monitor. There's no reason because you have nothing to view on it. There's nothing you're going to view on it that's actually that resolution. <laughs> this came with a video in it, which is that resolution for this thing. I maybe have four other videos, and that's like scouring for sample videos of UHD because the content does not exist yet. Yeah. People are shooting in 4K. Like 4K. People are shooting in 4K to be able to scale back down HD in the best way possible. And good HD looks so much better than crappy UHD because we're not at the point where you can make good HD encoding on a device and have it run right. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's that. the thing. It's UHD right now looks worse than a good 1080 encode. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, as someone who used to build computers all the time and has always loved the technology, the fact that I could buy something that was basically a 2K monitor 15 years ago for less than half the price what it cost me now just pisses me off a little bit. That's all. <laughs> yeah, I'm with Jesse on this one. It's like if that's if that's your work. Can't I just rage against the machine without having no. like without having to argue about it? No. <laughs> well, my my biggest buy was the uh, seventy two hundred Tamron. Yep. And I have absolutely no regrets. Nope. I actually had to sit down and think about that and go, was it? Did I did I buy my sixty in this year? And I remembered I took my sixty to Thanksgiving last year, so I must have had it last year. Yeah. <laughs> so the but I definitely bought the lens this year because I got that in the bag and a bunch of other stuff all at once and. Mm -hmm. No, that's definitely one thing I never had buyer's remorse on. No, oh, it's yep. totally worth it. All right, some post ads. Welcome back to Sports Center. Uh, we're not that far away from where they record Sports Center. You know, it's only in the next state over. Really? It's in Connecticut, Fairfield. Oh, that's I didn't know that. That's where the ESPN World Headquarters is. Huh. All right. So those are all the 2014 questions. I've got. Three things on 2015, since that's coming up. Uh, the first one is very specific. The Lytro Ilum, which we talked about earlier this year. Wait, there's a new Lytro? Yes, it's been a new Lytro for a little while. It's kind yeah. of a professional Lytro. It's basically their version 2. It's, they're calling it the Ilum. Okay. Uh, will it make light field photography a viable medium in 2015? I, I think it's still going to be gimmick. Not uh, yeah, gimmicks the word. It's it's not a directly useful thing, but it's a good add-on. It's a good sort of marketing tool. I don't see it. I mean, I'm sure artistically it's interesting, but I love it as an idea. But I can't think of a single use for it that a professional photographer would have. I have a yeah. couple, but it's in addition to other photography. It would never be a solo thing. Yeah, it's it's very much a little no. 
One thing that, that they did do in the last software update for the, the Illum, the, the Lytro software on the computer was not only, because when you first used it, it could only shoot at F2. Mm -hmm. Right. Like you could just pick your focus point. Now you can select your focus range on top of that. You can change your F-stop after the fact. Okay. So with that, you get a little more flexibility, but again, it's still one of those... I'm agreeing with, I like what Ryan has to say. It's not something you can really do on your own, on its own. It would have to be paired with something. I guess, I guess it's one more little tool. Yeah. I just don't see it as a game changer, and I no, like game I, changers. I, I can't see it as a game changer. I could see where it could be used in different ways, but I don't see it being its own medium. I don't see it doing anything spectacular. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe maybe they'll prove me wrong. I'd love to see it, but I just I just can't see it from here. All right, what do you want to see in twenty fifteen, Ryan Pease? If I could remember what movies are coming out, I would totally just like whip a movie out. <laughs> if I know those movies, I want to see. Um, no, the answer is easy. The flying car. That's <laughs> it. It's twenty fifteen. I was promised as a child. That we would have the flying car by 2015. And hoverboards and Jaws 17 or whatever the we fuck it was. We have hoverboards and we have sharks in a tornado. Have okay, I know we have hoverboards. I can't believe it, but we actually have hoverboards. Um, we have we do have Sharknado. I guess that counts as Jaws 17. Yeah. It basically we just need the flying car. You can buy a flying car. But everyone should have a flying car. No. It's, Have you driven around Providence it's lately? Probably a you bad can't idea. drive land car. <laughs> <laughs> I was promised a flying car. Land cars that uh, we have cars in land and that drive themselves. And Mr. Fusion. I want to be able to put banana peels in the back of my fucking car and fly it around. <laughs> so Jesse wants Back to the Future 4. Yeah, no. Maybe. <laughs> I want to see Jurassic World. All right. Mm, yeah. That's near the top. Of, well, near the top of my list. No. I am. Refusing to not be not excited about Star Wars Episode Seven. Oh yeah, that's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, that. It's kind of a big deal. I'm really looking forward to no, it. No, yeah, that'll be good. Uh, um, I've got more genuine hope for Jurassic World. But, <laughs> I have I have genuine hope for Star Wars. But I I have a child's dream for Star Wars Episode Seven. Like I really want it to be good. <laughs> I really really want it to be good. You know what I want to see in 2015? The flying car. Besides that, here, hit him. I want to see one of our other video projects really take off. Well, if we have time and we sit down and actually do it, I think we've uh, we've got a lot of potential for growth right now. We did that one, the uh, fictional characters one, and I hope you throw a little link down or something. Yep. Um, we, we did that, we got it on Reddit, we got it on a few, like, My Little Pony oriented things, and because it centered around a character that was obsessed with My Little Pony, it got a ton of views really yeah. fast. And I think there's some potential in that idea. We could continue to shoot projects with that and grow it, and I think we'd get a lot of hits. Um, I've got another project in the pipeline that's also part of my graduate degree. That's going to get out there. I, again, high hopes. I hope this is going to be very, very good. Well, I'm excited to work on that one. Yeah, so. you and Kaylin helped me with the script, and very happy with the script. We just have to get it together. And most of that's on me, so I just got to pull everyone to get in, together and do it. In the, uh, the show we did the test shot of last week that we talked about, we were leaving our podcast to go do our test shooting. I, I finished the rough cut of that, and we looked at that tonight, and uh, I showed that to the shop, and... Their reaction, they were a little, they laughed at it a bit more than you guys did. You guys were a little more serious and somber watching it, but it was. Well, I was trying to view it like the. Yeah, you were trying to critique it. Like the and well, but my point of view was from the average YouTube viewer who's going to tune away after thirty seconds, mm -hmm. and so I looked at it kind of harshly through that lens. And, and well, that's what we need. In and of itself, it needs a little bit of work, but I love the concept of well, it. Well, like I said, I'm not a terribly good non-linear editor i i can do this podcast because i basically just cut out the stuff that's bad do you want to tell anyone what it is uh well we have a working title we're calling analog game night and it's basically a bunch of people sitting around and playing games and the the, the game itself is merely a plot device to 
get the interactions of the people and the people are the characters. Nope. That's, that's, but that's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see our fictional character series, do some more, your graduate program, and a game, a game-based show, and maybe one other concept we come up with, kind of, kind of run with it. So that's a lot to work on, right there. Yeah, no, that's going to be nearly full-time production at that point. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyone else have anything else they want to see in 2015, or can I get to the closing question? Besides the flying car. No. I'm All right. good. All right. I'm calling this the big time prediction. I want one totally out of left field, totally insane prediction. Do you have to ask? You can't have a flying car. Damn it. GM is not putting out a flying car. Tesla maybe, but not GM. Oh. Hmm. Do you have a real one? No, I just want to see a flying car. <laughs> okay. Okay, fine. You can have a flying car. <laughs> um, hmm. Come on, this is like that last minute of wait, wait, don't tell me. You have to come up with something stupid, some stupid giant news headline that should never really happen. That's what I'm trying to come up with. I'm going to go with the FAA doing something really stupid with drones. I know that's really vague, but I think we're going to see like some, some attempt at enforcement that's just going to go horribly wrong. Okay, so here's how we Drone make... protests. Let's see. It. Here's how we make this a big time prediction. FAA drone bans in. drones. No, drone in. And then there's a drone in in DC. Yep. The skies go black full it's of in. drones. Okay. I'm taking credit for that. That's okay. amazing. FAA <laughs> bans drones. Protest is covered in DC. I'm going to go register dronein.com. Go for it. You should do that right now. <laughs> Hashtag drone in. <laughs> Hashtag drone in. Okay. Jesse? Flying drone cars? Lives matter. What? Flying cars? No, we're not actually going to see the flying car. Headline news Star Wars doesn't suck. That's December a bold predict. That, that is quite a big time prediction. December 19th. Headline news Star Wars didn't suck. That is a very bold prediction. Well, I'm, I'm going to stick to my camera prediction I thought of when I came up with the question. Canon produces 50 megapixel medium format digital camera that can record in 8K <laughs> that I buy three of. You got rich this year. <laughs> I got rich this year. By the end of the year, I'm going to be able to buy three 8K medium format cameras. Fantastic. I'm excited. And then we're going to film everything in 8K and downscale it to 720p. <laughs> Just because we can't. I don't have to buy more hard drives. <laughs> yes. I mean... Whatever. I, I would like to see Canon put a plus 24 megapixel sensor on the fucking market first. How about that? That, that Well, the, there probably are. Q1, they're yeah. They're thinking it's going to be some. The, the rumors are it's somewhere between the 5D and the 1. And the 1D. And it's probably... It's 800D. <laughs> it's going to be an 8. It's going to be the 800D competitor. It's 801D. Gonna be, it's going to be the... Uh, well, no, because in the Canon naming scheme, it has to be single digit for the pro bodies. So it'll be like a 4... 8D? <laughs> numbers available but well there'll probably be a two or or <laughs> really funny probably be a two or a three and it'll be like a 50 megapixel sensor they're not gonna go that far i think they will their fan base does nothing but whine about oh you don't need that many pixels it's they're not gonna go to 50 i don't think they have the tech to go to 50 they don't have the field testing of the 50 i think sony's making the sensor all right well that's mm -hmm. that's 2014 yeah so that that's us uh, wrapping up 2014. We we talked a lot about movies and another another normal aperture chat episode, which I liked. Uh, Felt more like a media file. It really did feel more <laughs> like a media file episode, which which we haven't done in a while. Um, I think we're gonna take the first week of 2015 off because that day we'll actually be recording the pilot of Analog Game Night, unless we come up with a better name for it. That'll be the pilot of whatever the new show is. Uh, so we'll take next Sunday off, which we, we usually record on Sunday, and I try and get it up Monday or Tuesday. Uh, so we'll take that week off, and then we'll uh, we'll be back on our regular schedule after that. Mm -hmm. Up until the con. Up until the con, and then we'll take some time off, unless we try no. to record something at the con. No. No, we won't. We don't have time for no. that. I think it's a good idea. You go I, ahead. <laughs> I'm busy that weekend. Uh -huh. Yeah, so am I. <laughs> Maybe I'll maybe I'll go sit in on an episode of ITAP. 
No, are, are they still recording with uh, the other guys? Yeah. Oh, with the other guys, yeah, with Legacy Radio, they are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. ITAP hasn't been its own show in a while. Yeah. No, it, it's, it's kind of a shame, because I listened to the last few ITAPs when they were recording with Legacy, and then they cut their own feed and just moved over to Legacy Radio, and I never subscribed to that feed. Yeah, yeah. So I have no, I had no idea if they were still going. Or that, that's like my going. other goal for 2015 is to get this converted over to just to get on the ball with converting it to audio when I export because it's easy enough to after I export the video, just turn around and say export again MP3 and just let it go. You know what's bullshit there. about that though? Mm. This video you can do for free on YouTube to do an audio podcast. That costs me money. You have to pay. Yeah. Which. That's why I've been putting it off. But in 2015, I might actually pay Libsyn a little bit of money or Stitcher Libsyn, or somebody. Libsyn's amazing, and the money's not that much. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll pay for it. I mean, all of Season 1 has been converted to MP3. That was a project recently. Uh, and I can go back and do all of Season 2 up till now. And then, you know, when we decide to go audio, we'll put it in there. We'll get it on iTunes. We'll get it in other places. And we'll see what happens. Not bad. We were, at, at first, we were doing a lot that really required seeing it, but we really don't now. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. <laughs> so it's it's something we can we can work towards, and it'll it give us a chance to expand our audience a little bit. God knows I listen to Jared Poland in the car more than anywhere else at this point. So. <laughs> I always watch the video, but yeah. I, I watch the video if I have time at work, and if I don't, the podcast still downloads to my phone, and I still listen to it in the car. That's cool. Sometimes I listen to it twice, once watching the video and once listening, but... <laughs> All right. Well, happy 2014, everybody. Enjoy your 2015, and uh, we're out of here. Have a good one.